So welcome to This is Getting Old. I'm your host, Melissa B., PhD, and today I'm joined by Dr. Lisa O'Neill. So welcome. Lisa, how are you? I'm wonderful. Thank you for having me today. Good. And so you are the Associate Director of Research and Education at the University of Arizona, and you have your doctorate in behavioral health, and you're also a current health and aging policy fellow. I am. I am. It's been a wonderful experience. Good. So you and I connected a couple of weeks ago, and we're talking about all different types of topics, but the one uh, that you sent me, you sent me an email about some of this information around COVID and some of the um, scams that are happening now for older adults. And so while this is always like typically a problem, maybe you can just explain kind of how people are, you know, what types of scams are we seeing, you know, and, or, and we can just kind of go from there. Okay. So what's, what's happening today with the COVID-19 situation um, is you're right. We always have scams that are going around forever and always. Grandparent scam, the lottery scam, um, the bank scams, those are always happening and always changing and people are always trying to keep up with the new wave of those. But in this current situation with COVID-19 and the resulting self-isolation that's happening, we find that many older adults are more isolated than normal which puts them at higher risk. So they're also struggling with being more isolated and increased levels of loneliness, fear, depression, anxiety, and all of that puts them at a higher risk than normal. So I think, and then in particular, we're gonna talk a little bit more about financial um, exploitation, abuse. Right. Um, but so how big of a problem is it? Because I think this is something a lot of people don't know. So in general, um, the national statistics say that financial exploitation affects older adults in our economy anywhere from $3 billion to $36 billion a year. And that's, the range is so wide, it's because it's largely underreported. And if the estimates right now that financial exploitation cases are only are one case for every 44 instances of financial abuse are reported. Are reported. So that's why we have a large range. It goes, it's not reported and the issue just keeps growing. All right. So I saw somewhere that at least 20% of older adults have been the victim of some type of fraudulent scheme of some sort. So, um, but yeah, it's kind of embarrassing when you get taken. Um, I was actually happy to see Frankie and Grace actually had like an episode where Jane Fonda and Lily Tomlin, like, did you see that one? I didn't. <laughs> Basically, Jane Fonda hires someone to come in and do some repairs, and they stole like all the copper pipes out of her walls. And I was like, "Well, there's one I've never heard of before." Yeah, that that actually is part of the general scams that normally happen. There's yard repair scams and home repairs. It's very, very common. They can show up and ask to do work, and then do the work and charge you three or four times what they said they were going to charge. Or worse, they'll show up, do the work, and then um, force you to pay, make it seem in a very fearful, um, aggressive style, and they'll force you to pay. Right, more than what you were supposed to pay. Right. Yeah. So, um, so let's talk about during COVID. Like, what are some of the things that we're seeing that are that might be a little bit more specific to this particular pandemic? So some of the things that we're seeing now related to COVID-19 are they're, the scam artists are going around um, door to door or they're calling, offering to do grocery shopping for um, self-isolating older adults. And what happens is they're taking the money and never returning. There are also individuals going door to door or calling saying that they can sanitize homes to help keep you safe from the virus. Um, there have been reports of people going door to door claiming they're from the Census Bureau, asking for financial information. Because um, the census you know, is going on right now too. The census is going on right now. But um, of course the Census Bureau would never ask for money or financial donations you know, for that cause. Um, con artists are also calling and email, emailing consumers um, saying that they have a, vac a, a cure or a vaccination and asking for money to be put on a list so you can receive a vaccine. Um, there's also a lot of miracle cures out there, hand soaps, sanitizers, tooth, 
toothpaste, essential oils paper supply. <laughs> that can help keep you safe from the virus. Um, there's also some instances where they're trying to lure people to invest in companies that can um, detect or, or cure the virus. And there's um, instances where people are going around claiming to be from other government agencies, such as Social Security Administration, the CDC, or health departments, and trying to obtain personal or financial information um, as well. So there's just a lot more. They're really focusing on older adults who are a home alone and who might be feeling very lonely, and um, they're at higher risk because of that. And what's, what's really important to remember is that these scam artists are very good at what they do. They are experts, they practice, they perfect their skills, and right now they're feeding off of our fear of the unknown and our uncertainty about what's going on and what's going to happen. And it's really, you cannot underestimate the power of loneliness. Mm -hmm. um, trust relationships, with all of that going on and you're lonely and you're afraid, trust relationships can develop very, very quickly. So as an example, let's say someone calls you and they're asking for money um, for some charity and you say, no, I don't know you, I don't know the charity, but you don't hang up and you just keep talking to them and they talk to you about the charity and you get to know them and you get to know the charity a little bit better and you hang up and still no money has, has changed hands, but maybe they call you back the next day just to talk and to chat and they talk to you again about the charity. By the third time they call you, they're no longer a stranger talking about a strange unknown charity. It's Bob asking for help. Yeah, because the same person is going to call you back. The same and person. And that trust relationship is developed very quickly. And that's, that's how easy it happens, just like that. Yeah. So, the, so what are some red flags? Because I, I hear the red flags in, the, in each of the examples that you gave. But how could someone, like, what is something that should raise a red flag so that you can recognize? Right. So what can you do to protect yourself? So the first thing that I would always say is trust your instincts. If something doesn't seem right, it's probably not right. So go with your instincts first and foremost. Second, don't trust anyone or um, give pay attention to anyone that you haven't met in person. And most especially if you haven't initiated the contact. If you initiate the contact, more than likely you're dealing with a very reputable person and agency. If they reach out to you asking for money or personal information, be suspicious. Um, never make a, a payment of any type with a gift card. That should also be a number one flag. Um, we all know to be cautious about giving out personal information, your name, your date of birth, bank, bank information, your social security card. But um, this also includes your Medicare number. You should guard your Medicare card and your Medicare number just like you would a credit card. Um, so that's very important. When you receive emails, look for things like misspellings, some typos, weird fonts. Um, and remember that it's okay not to answer your door and not to answer the phone. If you don't know who is on the other side of the door or who is calling you, it is perfectly acceptable not to answer, um, not to answer and not to talk to them. Remember that there are no miracle cures right now. Um, be suspicious of anyone offering things like that. Anything related to coronavirus testing or um, supplies or treatment. And really a common phrase that is used in, uh, to protect people against uh, financial exploitation is just simply tell a friend before you spend. Don't do anything spontaneously, just slow down, think about it a little bit more. And if you're not sure, talk to somebody about it. Yeah, tell a friend that's like our hashtag spend. now. Hashtag tell a friend before you spend. <laughs> right, it's really helpful. And really all that does is just it slows the process down and gives you an opportunity to really think it through, which is the exact opposite of what a con artist wants you to do. They might pressure you using some aggressive tactics to make a decision on the spot. And that's what we want to avoid. Right. One of the other things she said is, you know, if you actually do, because you said, if you haven't met the person face to face, but if they're knocking on your door, 
then right. you you need to wait until they performed this like how so if somebody knocked on your door because i mean i see this a lot and i don't really know if they're legitimate companies or not but you certainly don't want to pay before they do what they say they're going to do but right. then, you know part of what you the flip side of that is you said that people will do part of the work or all the work and then change the rate on you so right so what I would suggest, number one, if someone knocks on your door and you don't know who it is, don't answer the door. If you need a service done to your home, you initiate the call and you call a local company out to you. Now you're expecting somebody. So number one, if you don't know them, don't talk to them. Now, if you do talk to them, get their card and their information and say, I'll call you back. Don't agree to anything on site at the moment got to happen right now. And they may say, well, we're here right now. We'll give you a, a break in price if you let us do it right now. But don't fall victim to that kind of pressure. Just take their card and say, well, think about it and we'll call you back. That gives you the opportunity to maybe do some investigation and some research on your own to see if they are a reputable company and to really decide, do I really need this service done on my home right now? So again, it's just slowing down the process so nothing has to happen right away. True. So some of the other um, things that I saw, so the like different resources that we could direct people to, you know, the U.S. Um, the United States Senate Special Committee for Aging puts out an annual fraud book um, every year, and you can just Google this, and I'll put it on my website. Of the top ten scams, which you know, when we first started this conversation, you were kind of listing those, um, but that's an important resource to to read. Um, and they have um, a hotline number that you can call, um, 855-303-9470. Um, what other resources are um, reporting? The Attorney General's Office has recently put out a, um, a phone number that they want people to call and report scams specifically related to COVID-19. And that number is um, 1-866-720. 5721 or by emailing the National Center for Disaster Fraud at disaster at leo, L-E-O dot gov. Um, I would also say if someone is feeling that they are in immediate danger, say someone is at your door and they're being very aggressive, I would call, I would call 911. I wouldn't be, I wouldn't hesitate to do that. Um, you can also call your local adult protective services to see what advice they may give. And always don't forget that your um, area agency on aging will be um, that's such a valuable resource. Area agencies on aging are in um, all regions across the country. So you have one, you just have to Google it, find the phone number, give them a call, and they will know what's going on in your area, what kind of current scams are happening, what to look out for. If, they, if you're looking for a specific resource, um, if they don't know, if they aren't doing it, they'll know who is. And so they're really a great place to start if you're not quite sure who to call. Okay. Um, yeah, so I think a lot of, the only other thing I found was um, the Department of Justice has a website and they have a resource um, roadmap. And so even at any point in time, if, if, even if it's not during COVID-19, um, that was like a little roadmap that would ask you a series of questions and then it takes you to the link for where to actually report whether it's the Federal Trade Commission or you know there were other other federal agencies depending on who's if they took your money or if you gave your money you know was a family member professional so it just kind of helps you navigate who to contact. It definitely can help you with the reporting process for sure and if you can't remember again, like who to call, I really recommend the area agencies on aging as well, because they can help you remember, oh, the Department of Justice has this great website, you know, and they can direct you there. So, because sometimes when this has happened to you, you just can't think really of who to call. And so sometimes just focusing on an aging agency is really your best bet. And right. they can That's kind of a go-to source that I think- A go-to source. We don't know. But yeah. this is so like critical is because older adults, like they're, this is a time of life where they don't have time to recuperate the money that's taken from mm -hmm. them. And then they're embarrassed that these things that this has happened. So, you know, part of why I want to talk about it today is to let people know that, you know, this is an, you know, an additional time that people are vulnerable and that 
this does mm -hmm. happen and you do need to report it and we do need to know um, so that we can help you. And then how do you recognize these things before they're happening to you? Right. And really what I would stress is um, it is important to know that this can happen to anyone, anywhere, in any setting. You know, this, this per specific situation that we're dealing with raises some of the risk, but this can happen anywhere at any time. In the, in the best of circumstances. So it is important to know and to be aware. And really don't, I know that older adults can often feel embarrassed. Oh my gosh, I can't believe I fell for that. But you really have to understand how good these con artists are. This is their job and they have perfected it over and over and over again. There's no shame in falling victim to it because it simply happens to so many people. You are not alone, you are not the only one. And reporting it is really the best thing we can do to educate the public so we can get um, a handle on these and stop these scams before they get going. Yeah, I think the key though is trying to educate people to prevent it, but if it has happened to you, to go ahead and report it. Because I would think even in COVID-19, it doesn't really matter how old you are. If someone comes by and says, hey, I've got, you know, a." a a warehouse full of masks and gloves and I'll bring them to you to help protect your family you know, during right. the time. Or we're going around and selling home-based like COVID-19 testing kits so that you don't have to go to the hospital. And you know, I think that the public needs to know that those should be red flags, anybody promising you, you know, something like that that's come to your door. Right. Anyone coming to your door and making promises and wanting money in exchange right now for whatever their we're offering should should instantly sort of raise your suspicion and make you just think twice about um, their credibility right. and give yourself some time to do some research and and make a good decision right and then you don't, don't have to make a decision on the spot <laughs> true and also knowing that they can come they can come to your email inbox they can call you on the telephone um, right you know, so just kind of be aware of all the different tactics that they could potentially try. So. Just be on guard and, and give yourself some time to make the right decision. All right. Well, thank you so much for being with us today and sharing this information. I'll post the handouts um, that you sent to me um, so that people can have you know, a little bit more information about what Medicare actually does cover. And, you know, so thank Wonderful. you very much. Well, thank you very much for having me. Thank you for joining me today for This Is Getting Old. If you'd like to know more, you can subscribe to my YouTube channel. And if you have any questions or a related topic you'd like to hear from me about, just let me know. Thanks.